Okay. Uh, so, yes, you learned about the Constitution in middle school, uh, and kids always start to roll their eyes when I start getting into the Constitution. We learned this already, and then when I uh, do pretests, they fail the pretests. So, yes, you've learned this before, but you guys don't actually remember this stuff. So that's why we have to go through this yet again. Okay, now last class we went over the Declaration of Independence and some of the um, concepts that were built in the Declaration of Independence that are founding um, concepts of our, our government as it is structured. Uh, one of the concepts is a limited government. Uh, that the government can't do whatever the heck it wants. That was one of the things that was built into that Declaration of Independence. King George, you can't do X, Y, and Z because that's not protecting the needs of the citizenry. Um, and natural rights. We studied uh, several philosophers of the day and how the belief at the time uh, was growing that human beings had certain natural rights, such as life, liberty, and the pursuit of, uh, of happiness. Uh, that if the government doesn't provide and protect those rights, that the people have uh, the right to take back their power and, and build a government that will do those things. And that's, you know, what's embedded in this concept of the social contract. That's the idea of the social contract. We give our power to the government just so long as it does what it's supposed to do in terms of protecting us. And if it fails to do so, we take that contract back and we pass it on to someone else. Uh, that might do a better job. And that's that's what's built into our entire election system. We allow that person to run things until they completely fail, and then we vote for someone else uh, in the hopes that they do a better job. Um, popular sovereignty is this concept of, okay, uh, sovereignty is, is, is power, an independent power. And back in the day, we would call a king or queen a sovereign. Um, or it's sovereignty, we're talking about the sovereignty of Iran as a country. We all expect, according to the United Nations, that Iran has the right to run its country however it pleases. That is the concept of sovereignty. United States uh, ha expects a right to run itself without interference of other countries. That's what we mean by sovereignty. Um, we don't we wouldn't appreciate if some other country came in to try to tell us what we can and cannot do. That's the concept of sovereignty. Well, the concept of popular sovereignty is, in our country, the people who ultimately make the decision of what should and shouldn't happen are the citizens. We vote, and that's how we say what we want. And so we are the sovereigns, we are the kings and queens of this country. At least that's the concept of popular sovereignty that was built into the Declaration of Independence. And then there's this concept of republicanism, which, depending on who you talk to, uh, we'll just take it as a means of um, a representative government. That's not always what is meant by republicanism, but we'll, we'll stick with that simple um, descriptor. <clears throat> Okay, so today we'll look at the Constitution, which is the document that outlines the structures and powers of the federal government of the United States. It is the supreme law of the land. In fact, that's the traditional definition of our Constitution, the supreme law of the land. All of their laws passed in the United States cannot violate the Constitution. California passes a law that in some way doesn't line up with the guidelines of the Constitution. The Supreme Court can uh, strike it down and... and uh, not allow it to uh, go into effect. And like the Declaration of Independence, uh, the Constitution reflects the principles of limited government, natural rights, social contract, popular sovereignty, and republicanism. It also um, is based on two more important principles, separation of powers and checks and balances. So we'll go into that I know you've seen this before. Separation of powers, the idea that different branches of government legislative, executive, and judicial branches should be separate from one another in order to prevent any one branch from becoming too powerful. Again, this is a way to make sure that we don't end up with a king or some other power that can overpower everything and have one decision maker over all or one powerful decision maker over all. Um, and so these three different branches are were established in order to 
separate power so that no one could get a monopoly on power. Legislative branch makes the law. Executive branch, the president, his staff, the bureaucracy, enforces the law. And the judicial branch, the courts, including the Supreme Court, interprets the law. The framers of the U.S. Constitution believed that if one person or, or group were able to do all three jobs, they would have too much power and become tyrannical, like a dictator. Then this checks and balances is also built into the structure of the Constitution. Checks and balances is the idea that different branches of government should not only be separate, but also be able to act as a check on the other branches and restrain them in order per, to prevent tyranny. For example, Congress can pass legislation, but the president can veto it. Uh, Congress can um, now Congress can check him right back by overriding his veto and passing the law, and the Supreme Court can check Congress by declaring the law unconstitutional. So there's these powers that each of these branches have to limit the power of the other branches, or that's the way it's designed to work, whether it works or not. Uh, and we'll get more in depth into what kind of oversight each branch has us over the other in the future. Now, um, the structure of the Constitution starts with the preamble and explains the goals of the Constitution is to create a just system of government that will protect the people from internal and external threats and ensure equality of opportunity. And then the articles describe the structure and power of the government. Now, one of the assignments that you guys have... Um, for today is to fill out this constitutional scavenger hunt um, document. And I'm going to pull it up real quick because I've basically just given you some of the answers for it just with this slide. Um, Article 1, what branch is that over? And you take a look here. Article 1 is the legislative branch. That's the Constitution. Article 1 uh, gives information about how Congress should be run. Then Article 2. Article 2, what branch? Executive branch. Article 3, judicial branch. So this is some information that you could use on today's assignment. Um, okay, then of course um, there's also articles four and five. Then the other point that part that um, we pay a lot of attention to in this class is the amendment section, meaning the changes, changes that were made after the original Constitution was was written. Um, so the Bill of Rights, the first ten changes to the Constitution, and then other amendments that have followed throughout history. Um, and then, um, yeah, the event, you're going to have a quiz is, uh, today actually, uh, over a number of the amendments in the Bill of Rights. Um, we're not quite ready for the checks and balances quiz. Um, we'll get into that on, a, on another day, but all the amendments, uh, in the Constitution that you will be doing a a quiz is over today and doing some practices over it today. Okay, so um, let's go on to what you need to get done for next class. So there's this constitutional scavenger hunt, and at the very top of the constitutional scavenger hunt, it has two different uh, links you can go to to answer the questions. This one here is just the whole constitution in and of itself, and you can use uh, control F to try and find things. Uh, Congress, that sort of thing. Um, there's also this annotated resource where you can go to specific sections, uh, for example, Article 1, and then this will tell you if, if there's a question about uh, Section 2, Clause 1, this makes it a lot easier to find. So that's something that you have as a resource as well. Both of those links are right here at the beginning of the document. So that's going to take you a bit of time. Uh, then you have a do I have a right game. And this one tends to students tend to like uh, playing this game. So you click on the link and there's two different screenshots that you'll need to put. One, after you've kind of built up the office, whether you've hired a bunch of new lawyers or whether you've decorated the office, that's an option too. Um, and then your final score or your, your final screen when the game is over. 